Welcome to Your Strata Property, the podcast for property owners looking for reliable, accurate and bite-sized information from an experienced and authoritative source. To access previous episodes and useful strata tips, go to www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. Hello and welcome. I'm Amanda Farmer and I have with me today Rena Van Alst. Hi, Rena. Hi, Amanda. How are you? I am good. Happy 2019. Woohoo! Oh, I know. Happy New Year. <laughs> it's all, we're all back again, back into the groove. We are back, back into the swing of things. I think this is the week that uh, most offices are reopening for the new year, gearing back up. Maybe some lucky few are still on holidays, enjoying the uh, fun in the sun. Recovering yeah. from New Year's. I think some of my owners actually, man, that like they work sort of through the break and then they work the first week and then take the second week off. So I think yeah. what you find is that as each week in January goes by, it gets busier and busier. And then after Australia Day, mm. it's all back on for one and all, as they say. Yeah, a lot of people I find these days take time off for school holidays too, which is which is great. Uh, mm. My little boy is starting school this year, which is very exciting. So oh, we're wonderful. gearing up for that. So I'll be one of those uh, parents who are, I like to say looking forward to school holidays. I know some parents say they dread the school holidays, but I want to be the one that looks forward to well, them. Well, Amanda, I think I'll, I'll wait, wait till all the school holidays come and then I'll ask you then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'll remember that. we got a date. <laughs> okay. So... I know it's only the first week back, but I'm sure you've got a challenge for us, Rena. What's been challenging you? Yeah, this challenge actually came in at the tail end of last year, so I wasn't able to deal with it at the time. But the question arose where an owner rang me. There were some number of issues in, in this building. It's a large building, defects, et cetera. And obviously the committee is not taking the relevant action in the view of this owner. And she asked me if I would be able to consent to a, an appointment under Section 237 to be a compulsory manager, which I said once I looked at the stuff, I said I'd be happy to do. But then I asked her, um, well, who's the current agent and what is the term remaining on their contract? And she sent me the agency agreement and basically they've got another two years to go on their agency agreement. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, well, I'm not really sure how this works because obviously there's a contract between the Owners Corporation and, and that strata manager. And... I know that you don't want me to fulfill all the functions necessarily in terms of, you know, like issuing levies and all that statutory stuff, Amanda, but I don't really know how it works, whether or not an agent can be appointed to deal with certain things. And I have had that appointment where I was just appointed at one stage to deal with the Supreme Court matter for a particular building. But then a month later, I was then appointed to look after all the functions under Section 237. So have you come across any this sort of scenario before, Amanda, this, this question? Uh, I can't put my finger on any particular decision of the tribunal that deals with it, but I have certainly had buildings who have come to me, lot owners, uh, I should be more yeah. specific, lot owners who have come to me in a situation where they say their owner's corporation is not functioning satisfactorily, which if yeah. you remember is the test under Section 237 for a compulsory appointment. The owner's corporation is not functioning satisfactorily even though they have a strata manager. Yeah. So the strata manager is not doing their job or not complying with the legislation, not sending out notices of meeting, not raising enough money, and the strata committee is plodding along just doing what this strata manager is advising or just assuming that the strata manager is doing the right thing. So that definitely happens. But what in the case, Amanda, this is a bit different because this actually is where the owners corporation and the committee is not complying. It. The manager is basically undertaking instructions. So the committee is not taking action where it needs to. So it's all the strata manager who's actually yep. at fault here. So they're not doing the wrong thing. They're just doing what they've been asked to do, which is basically nothing. Yes, very good point. And two solutions here. What I have seen work well in the past in that situation where the owner in particular is happy with the strata manager but not happy with the committee is to ask that strata manager to consent to a compulsory appointment. Yeah. So that actual manager then says, yeah. look, I agree. This strata committee is out of control, not taking my advice, not doing what they're supposed to do. Here I'm submitting a proposal to act under a compulsory appointment and I want to be appointed as the compulsory agent. So I have actually seen that work yeah. well. If that's not the case and they want to, for whatever reason, get rid of their strata manager, then my understanding would be that you'd be seeking two orders from the tribunal. You'd have to seek an order that the management agreement be terminated. And the okay, and you'd have to then, Amanda, what, 
like list all the grounds that yes like so the you take there, so there's yes so there's a breach of the contract so they're obliged obviously under their contract yeah. to act in accordance with the law well there, there is a section now in the act and i can look it up i just referred to it the other day section 72 strata managing agent and building manager agreements may be varied or terminated by the tribunal mm. Yeah, this is a new section. I think uh, this wasn't new. in the ninety six Act, was it? No, it's new. Very no. Yeah. So I think that's why we haven't seen any cases on this, as far as I'm aware. So what I would be doing in that situation where we're not happy with the strata manager, we're not happy with the strata committee, we do have to prove that the building, the owners corporation is dysfunctional and we'd be seeking an order under section 72 that the agreement be terminated and an order under section 237 that a new strata manager be appointed with all the powers of the owners corporation. Yeah, that's very demanding because if you look at that subsection three, it talks about the tribunal may make an order under this section on any of the following grounds and one of them is that the agent has refused or failed to perform the agreement or has performed it unsatisfactorily, yep. et cetera. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, really handy section there. I'll be interested to see some cases come out of the tribunal that apply that. That would be um, good to watch. Okay, so I hope that answers your question. Yeah, it does actually, that, yeah. So I hope I can give, that, give um, some advice to that owner about how to have, yeah, that agent removed mm. um, as well as having a compulsory appointment application submitted. But I always tell owners to always have a lawyer to do these, Amanda, because, mm. you know, you've got to basically prove breaches of the act and breaches of, of in this case, the contract for the agent mm. where they haven't performed. So it's not something that usually a lay person knows how to sort of put in words because, when a tribunal member is looking at your application, you, it's got to basically meet breaches of the Act and then you've got to demonstrate how that's occurred. So Yeah, yeah. They are tough applications to prove except in the most uh, obviously extreme of circumstances. Um, they don't, those orders don't get made too often. So, yeah, good to get some help with that. Yeah. Well, my challenge this week also relates to strata managers and I'm talking about uh, commissions. So Mm. uh, I was recently involved in a situation where a building was proposing the appointment of a new managing agent. Their AGM was coming up and their current managing agent uh, was also on the agenda for a reappointment. And it just so happened that a few days before the AGM, the insurance for the building was coming up for renewal. And the committee had asked me, Amanda, what happens with the commission on the insurance renewal? Usually that would go to our current managing agent. But if we appoint a new agent just a few days later to manage our building, they're the ones who are going to be doing the work for the next 12 months. Why Mm. aren't they getting the commission? How do we resolve this? And I put a phone call through to the broker and spoke to them on behalf of the committee about how this all works. And they said, well, uh, whoever places the policy for renewal gets the commission unless we're told not to pay that commission or to pay it somewhere else and it's only the agent who can tell us that. So uh, I wanted to ask you, Rena, what your thoughts are on this. Mm. Um, who should really be getting this commission? Perhaps that comes back to, you know, what is the commission for? And if we are in this situation, how do we make sure that the person who is going to be the strata manager, going to be doing the work, actually gets the commission? Yeah, so basically in most agency agreements, Amanda, the, the commission is part of the management fee because mm-hmm. it's basically calculated on the fact that work has to be done for insurance claims. There's usually a provision for insurance claims to be undertaken for a fixed period of time perhaps. Um, and therefore that commission really is in advance, so for work to be mm-hmm. done in advance. And that also applies to the broker as well. So when brokers also get commission yes. and broker fees and, and that also applies to them so, so they actually are undertaking insurance claims and answering questions and undertaking those functions. So I think the agent really should be the one to say, well, you know, I've now been terminated, therefore, you know, please renew this policy, but the commission should not come to me. And I think Mm. that if agents don't do that, then they're really putting themselves in a very bad light because if you're saying to your client that part of our enumeration involves a commission in the future and doing work, then, then how do you justify asking for that commission when you know that you've been terminated and you won't be doing any further work. Mm. So I think in a sense it does put the whole stance of commissions and their receipt by managers in a very unfavourable light when that occurs, Amanda, I think, for clients because really it's always best to end on a good note with people. I just don't Mm. understand why, you know, for I don't know how many, it was a couple of thousand dollars or whatever the amount is. or It's not really worth ruining your reputation in the marketplace because those community members will probably tell someone else and tell someone Mm. else and, 
Yeah, that's right. A couple of grand. I mean, Mm. they might feel hard done by perhaps that manager. They might feel they've done a great job and they've been unfairly terminated. But, I mean, that's life, that's business. Mm. Our perception of what is good service would differ, you know, amongst different people, different expectations. I just think it's really an unsavoury sort of topic to really have managers trying to take a commission for a policy in the future that they know they're not going to be doing anything for. Yeah, I agree with you. The tricky part in this situation was that the policy was coming up for renewal before the meeting at which the strata manager may or may not have been reappointed. So there was some uncertainty there. Uh, But my understanding with insurance policies is is that you can hold over for a short period or uh, get a cover note for a month or something like that. Yeah, if you're staying with the same insurer then they will hold cover because they know that it's been approved and it's just a matter of paying premiums. So. Yeah, so that's often a good option too if you're not sure yeah. in that period who your manager is going to be so where the commission should go. Just check with your insurer if you can hold over for a month and then make yeah. sure the right person gets the commission when the policy is yeah. placed. But Amanda, just to ask you another question, Amanda, in that particular example, um, the reappointment of that managing agent, was that motion put forward by them or by the, the committee asked the, them to? The committee actually asked them to put it forward so that the owners would have another choice. So And so therefore what then, yeah, the, the agent should have said was that, yeah, if, if I am reappointed, I'll keep the commission and if I'm not reappointed, then I'll tell the broker to give the commission to your new mm. agent, depending on whether or not, you, again, you have a, an agreement with that broker. That's nothing that's another topic for another day, Amanda. We want mm. to talk about insurance and talk about distributor agreements mm. and authorised representative agency agreements as well. So that's another topic for another day. But, yeah, you've got to still have a, an agreement with that broker to be able to for the new manager to receive that commission as well. So that's another topic though. Distributor agreements and authorised representative. This sounds fascinating, Ren. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for this conversation. More complexity. <laughs> yes. No, hot topic for sure. Commissions, yeah. uh, brokers, insurers, strata managers, um, and how everybody gets remunerated in this uh, big wide world that is strata. Important stuff exactly. to talk about. Exactly. All right, 2019 is going to be hot, hot, hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, win. What's the win for this week, Rena? Well, at the end of the last year, I had a very contentious meeting. We knew it was going to be. People came in, you know, just the body language, you know, people paying, you know, every little bit of interest and anything was outstanding, even though they had amounts that were outstanding for a long time. And when it came, because everyone wanted to vote or give a proxy for someone else to vote on their behalf. So, you know, we had all the phone calls the day before about am I financial, et cetera. And at the beginning, I was chairing the meeting and I could sense, you know, just some of the questions and, you know, that were coming and yeah, it didn't really start very well. But um, but eventually at the end, I must say that even though the Enos Corporation, the committee hadn't achieved all its aims in terms of all the motions being passed, but there was an amendment, so something was passed. But everyone actually, I think at the end when... I said to everyone, we need to basically put all our cards on the table and I started with with myself and I said, basically, you know, I don't want to work with people who have issues in terms of gender items. It's just, you know, put everything on the line in terms of what our expectations are of each other and each community member did the same. So there's sort of like the two factions type of thing um, where that's usually the case where there are people that are very entrenched in favour and there are people that are very opposed and, you know, it can become quite heated and and nasty and personal at at times, Mm. which is really disappointing. But anyway, at the end of it all, like, even the people that, you know, had issues, we all, they gave gave me a hug and kiss. (laughs) Jesus, like. Another building. It's a different building. Yeah, you go from like, you know, this extreme, like, you know, animosity and, and, um, I mean, I don't take it personally because, I mean, I'm just doing my job, I suppose. But if you live in a building, I suppose, you do take it personally because you live there and you've got to see these people all the time. So I think sometimes just um, when these things do happen, it's sometimes good to have a bit of a pause in the meeting and and ask people to, you know, to sort of put their cards on the table and then once you've sort of had that discussion and then say, well, let's just draw a line in the sand. We can't go back and fix what's happened in the past between people but moving forward we you know the owners corporation we we all have a common goal of making sure the building is run effectively and the asset is maintained and the values of the building of all your apartments are maintained so we're on the same team let's just move forward and yeah so it's actually quite Mm. nice when that happens it's it's actually quite a rare occurrence but I must say yes when it does happen it's very satisfying because you know that deep down I think people we all want the same thing Uh, sometimes people go about doing it the wrong way Mm. but at the end of the day when people can acknowledge okay you know I was personal or I did say that or I, I did get heated or I didn't understand what you meant but 
as a saying that my husband always tells me, all's well that ends well. Yes, indeed. And I think the important point there, Rena, at least for me, walking into a meeting that can be quite tense, uh, mm. everybody is a little uncertain, maybe people have their battle armour on, they're ready for conflict. Mm. This often happens when I walk into a meeting because I think, oh, the lawyer's here, something's yeah, going on. that's bad news. And people <laughs> just aren't, yeah, yeah, for everyone except me, uh, the people <laughs> just don't uh, breathe. They don't breathe. They're all a little shaky and sweaty and, oh, and yeah. nervous. And yes. to break that ice, you know, I like to tell jokes. I like to be a little bit irreverent and, you know, unexpected. And they think, oh, this is, doesn't seem you like you can be, Amanda, because your, you, your be. contact with them is limited. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Well, they're nice jokes. You know. I'm not rude to <laughs> But I think, um, yeah, as a strata manager or as a chairperson or even as a committee member, perhaps see that as your role to make uh, help people feel at ease. And what can I do here to diffuse the tension? And sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes you can't do anything. Mm. You just have to get through the first couple of motions or the difficult motion that everybody's waiting for and then everybody relaxes. And I think sometimes just knowing that some meetings start like this, they don't always end like this, we will get mm. through it, everyone will calm down, everyone will breathe, just helps people to uh, relax a little bit more about strata meetings. And if it's your first meeting and you're walking into something like that, you've just bought in, that's a horrible mm. experience. You think, what yeah, it is, is actually. This? I, think it, I think it would put you off strata forever if you're mm. an, a new owner in a building and, and that happened. That's why I think as managers we really need to probably do some sort of courses on psychology mm -hmm. um, because – um, it's not just about, you know, like meeting technique and, and all that sort of thing. That's just, yeah, I mean, that's stuff anyone can learn really. But it's understanding personality types and understanding where people are coming from and understanding their motivation. And then when you understand people's motivation, then sometimes you can deal with it more effectively mm -hmm. and you can deal with it in a different way. So, yeah, I remember that. I think that's hopefully the courses now that for strata management do have some component of psychology it's really important yeah because, I'd be interested to know that too yeah and I think a lot of managers too man I think they're put off by you know these types of meetings and that's why I think a lot of people don't like to become strata managers because mm -hmm. this is a very large component of being a manager is running meetings yep and I remember I had managers you know that I used to work with that you know they couldn't sleep the night before when there was a contentious mm. meeting they mm. you know, just get anxious they you know, like you don't realise the effect that it has on people when we mm. know you're going to get – it's like going into battle, into a yep, war. That's I, mean, it. Yep. I, know, I know it's like a first world problem, to be honest, but not going into a real war. But Yes, but still have the same physical feelings yeah. about it. Yeah, for sure. And it, and you're right. It's not like you are lawyers who we do it day in, day out and are very comfortable with yeah. conflict. If it's not – And you're trained, man. I mean, you're trained to do that. That's what you mm. – as most managers aren't trained, they're just thrown in the deep end and mm. they have to go to a meeting and people are screaming and carrying on and, yeah. Yeah. Well, we will, you and I, keep doing our bit to help assist our yeah. newbie managers or those managers who might need some more guidance when it comes to these things. We all have difficult meetings, but there are certainly yeah. ways to improve at those kinds of meetings. Mm. And great to share that win, Rena, that you were able to, um, as you say, put your cards on the table, invite others to do it, clear mm. the air and result in a meeting where they were hugging you. I love that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I am going to uh, finish up with my win for this week. I'd like to share a successful uh, tribunal matter that is just about to conclude for a building that I've been working with. This matter related to a lot owner who had kind of cleverly, I think, removed the back wall of their wardrobe and opened it out into what was effectively the common property ceiling cavity and made themselves a nice little built-in wardrobe. <laughs> So they That's could the toddle out of... there, set up. They set up their chest of drawers in there, put some carpet Are you down. Serious? Yeah, and had a built-in <laughs> wardrobe, like walk through. It was like Narnia. <laughs> oh my god! That, that, I listen. You know, you're uh, talking about a man or something new all the time in Australia. I, I have never heard that. Oh well. wow! Well, we um we had photos of it. Uh, we actually had a video because some work was being done around the building. So the contractors who were on the roof saw it and took a video of it. That's how wow. I know I've got this such a clear image of it. Uh, yeah. And of course, this building said, yeah. Okay, that's not on. They have, don't have approval for that. So we went off uh, after writing some letters. We went off to the tribunal 
And I think perhaps the owners, after a little bit of pushback, um, they did go and get some advice from a Strata lawyer and very promptly after that came to us and said, what is it exactly that you want us to do because we are going to reinstate it. We'll put it all back. We accept that we weren't (laughs) allowed to do that. So um, as I speak, the proceedings are still going on, but it looks like they're about to wrap up on that basis. They will be settled. And the building, of course, very happy that they haven't had to go through uh, the stress of litigation. They did certainly have to commence it to get the attention of these owners Mm. and get them to go and get some good advice. Uh, But they're also keeping their building in order and making sure that others along the top floor there don't decide to take the same step and uh, fill in the ceiling cavity with their shoes and dresses and jackets. (laughs) Well, that's the thing that matter that comes up quite often in a lot of discussions that I have with members when people do the wrong thing. And and you say, well, if you don't take any action against that person, then yeah. you're setting a precedent so that anyone else can do it. So other people then think, well, if they can do it, why can't I do it? Yes. And that was exactly the position of this committee. They are a very hands-on, very focused committee who like to keep things in order and do a good job of it. And they, you know, they didn't quite like the fact that they had to go through this and had to pay the cost to engage me to do this. But they said, look, mm. we don't have a choice. You know, we have to take this step. We've tried. We've written letters, we've gone to mediation. That hasn't worked and we need to be sending the message to these owners and to others that this is not how our building operates. And that message has been sent, it has been received. And and the the thing to bear in mind that sometimes uh, and really often I would say in a litigator's experience, it's only the small percentage of cases that go all the way to a final hearing. Often it is enough to take that first step towards starting those proceedings, setting out exactly what you're claiming and why the law supports you and you'll find that the owners will come to the table or there'll be some compromise reached that everyone can live with and the matter's resolved. Yeah, it's a very good outcome, Amanda. Sometimes you do need to start proceedings for people to actually wake up and realise that because people tend to ignore letters when they're received, yes. especially from a strata manager, when it's a breach of a bylaw or anything, um, people don't tend to take much notice. But when it comes to them, like even sometimes just mediation, just yeah, an application for mediation can and sometimes mm. re- remedy the situation. People will say, oh, I don't want to go to mediation. They don't really know what it means. Mm. And then NCAT's a whole new area that people don't perhaps don't want it to be involved in. So that could be a good stick to use. But unfortunately, you said there are some cases that end up going to full hearing because people just very mm. intransigent in their views and want to have what they want. So yep. that's uh, a great outcome. Yes, indeed. Very happy with that one and a nice way to kick off the new year. So yeah. Wishing you all the best as you would jump back into it. Yeah, and try and take it easy and enjoy the good weather because daylight saving and still get to go perhaps to the beach or yep. the park or go for a walk after work. So it's really nice to be um, doing those things this time of the year. Yes, enjoy. And I'm looking forward to seeing those of you who are uh, who I will be catching up with this coming year. Some exciting guests lined up for the podcast. And, uh, of course, Rena, we will be here with our wins and challenges, sharing as much as we can with the Strata world. Strata yeah. world, see, not Strata just land getting, anymore. We're in the get, world. We're just getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch you next time. Okay, bye, Amanda. Bye. Thank you for listening to Your Strata Property, the podcast which consistently delivers to property owners reliable and accurate information about their Strata property. You can access all the information below this episode via the show notes at www.yourstrataproperty.com.au. You can also ask questions in the comments section, which Amanda will answer in her upcoming episodes. How can Amanda help you today?